In continuation to my last video on game theory, if you haven't seen it, you can watch it first. As important as it is for us to understand the sorts of strategies that we are adopting in these games of life that we find ourselves in, it is also very important for us to know the types of games that we're actually playing. And it's really on this note, I like to talk about this brilliant game theorist. His name is James P. Cass, and he wrote this book called Finite and Infinite Games. And in this book, essentially, he says that the games in life can be broken down broadly into two types. They are either finite games, where we are playing these games with these fixed objectives that we're trying to achieve so that we can win the game and end the game. And then there are these infinite games where the objective is really to perpetuate and continue the game for as long as possible. It is to make it an infinite game. There are no finite or fixed objectives. This distinction is very, very important, especially in life when we are playing a game against an adversary, whether it is in our relationships, in business, in work, in politics, in the economy, even in war. The reason why we need to know this distinction is because depending on the type of game we're playing, whether it's finite or infinite, it actually informs our objectives, our approach, our pursuit, and also the strategies that we adopt, and ultimately the outcome that we can achieve. And that's an illustration of the adversarial advantage of knowing the type of games that you're playing is really if you think back to the Vietnam War. See, in the late 20th century, the United States actually took on the Viet Cong in Vietnam. And if you were to put the United States into one corner, they were and still largely are such a powerful military force. They have so much wealth. They have a lot of equipment, a lot of arms, a lot of military experience and also funding. They've, they've spent a lot on military every single year, even back then. They're just such a powerful force. The Viet Cong, on the other hand, was really a guerrilla force made largely of farmers, private citizens, more or less. And so they took on each other. But the shocking thing is that the United States actually lost. They eventually withdrew from Vietnam. And the reason why they lost really comes down to the fact that they were playing the wrong game. See, the United States went into the Vietnam War trying to pursue this finite game of eliminating the Viet Cong. They wanted to exterminate the communist forces. And by the time they did, they hoped they would, it would be a quick war. They're so much more powerful and they could go back home. But on the other hand, the Viet Cong was actually playing an infinite game. They wanted to survive. They wanted to perpetuate the conflict for as long as possible and really to endure it and cause instability in the region. They were not really fighting the United States head on. They were not pursuing the finite objective of eliminating the United States. And so eventually the United States, as the war dragged on and the Viet Cong perpetuated this conflict for a long time, the cost of perpetuating the war just escalated and escalated and the public support of the war grew wary as they start to dwindle and eventually the United States had to withdraw. And so the Viet Cong forces won. And the reason really it comes down to the fact that they were both playing different games. The United States was trying to play a finite game against an opponent that was trying to play an infinite game. They were both playing different games, at least different objectives. But if you were to imagine that if, let's say, the Viet Cong was playing a finite game along with the United States, they would have easily lost. On the other hand, if the United States were to go into this with infinite objectives to play an infinite game, where they were trying to sustain themselves and the conflict as well, along with Viet Cong and see who could last longer and endure it, then it would have been, again, a very different outcome as well. So what we can tell from this example is that knowing the types of games that you are playing and that your adversary is playing is very important, especially in this adversarial context. Whether we are actually matched on the same sorts of games that we're playing, and also whether it gives us the most optimum outcome, and also informs us of, of what we can expect. Besides this adversarial value, there's also a lot of value in knowing this distinction in life. You see, James P. Cass, he believes that in life, as we live through life, a lot of us as players of life, we are either infinite players or finite players. A lot of us are mostly finite players in life, where in life we have a lot of fixed things that we want to achieve. We set these really fixed goals in our life that we think we want to achieve them and win at life. But he actually suggests a better outlook is to see life as an infinite game. 
not to limit your scope and see it in a very finite way, but see it as an infinite game so that you can really focus on developing your own resilience and your own enjoyment of life and really see it as this overall experience to really develop yourself and enjoy the game and draw value from the playing of the game itself rather than set yourself these superficial finite objectives because most of the time people playing the game of life as a finite game they tend to have very superficial objectives that leads them to have very very unfulfilling and dissatisfying lives so it's very important in life to know which type of game of life we're playing whether we're playing it as a finite game or an infinite game but regardless of your own views on which one it is that suits you and which one of it is appropriate, knowing this distinction and being conscious about the games that we get into and their very nature is very important in helping us achieve the most optimal outcome.